What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my Inner World playthrough. I am Jake, aka Center Tarnished. We are continuing our exploration of Stormvale. Um, gonna see what is below it and causing it to basically go uh, go mad. So, um, yeah, it's been a while. I've been traveling for work quite a bit um, these last couple of weeks, so sorry for the, the hiatus. I'm hoping, hoping to record a few today um, because I am leaving again here shortly for another week or so. Um, so if I'm not responding to comments and things like that, that's... That's why. Um, but yeah. Um, one thing I... Um, <clears throat> I was kind of exploring, you know, uh, the, the game to me is very much about human development um, and, you know, psychology and all those types of things. And I was... I was kind of messing around with, um, I think that there's a bunch of clues in the map as far as like one of my videos, I, I say that the moat around Lindell looks identical to a brain, um, which to me is, is like very good evidence of that we're on the right path, that it, it, it is about psychology and about, um, you know, the personal development and growth and things like that. Um, and another thing that I I dug into a little bit was um, fetal development um, and the different stages that it goes through. And there is a period around five weeks or so that is like identical to the overall layout of the map um, it looks to me like a, a fetus in, in a womb um, and Ronnie's uh, divine tower would be like the umbilical cord and the water around it would be like you know the placenta or um, things of things like that and um yeah, I'll have to readdress it when we get all of it open, but, um... And we know that Miyazaki loves the... the parent-child relationship. Um, so, it, like, it, it was just very, very fitting that I stumbled upon that. Surely what you seek is somewhere close by. And there's a couple other things about the map that I think are very, very interesting um, that go more towards like, you know, brain development and, and, and things like that. But it was just, yeah. And I know, it, I mean, it, the, the map also looks like a finger, um, but I, anybody who's been playing FromSoft games for many, many years knows that Miyazaki would not just put a finger. You know, I know that it fits thematically with the game, but he would put so many different things into the gigantic map that is new for, for his games. Um, he would put so many little clues and hidden, hidden things in there that studying the map to me is equally as important as studying like an item description. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> this picture is actually really interesting too because in the pictures inside the castle, you see that um, like the castle is made. Uh, but then here you see that the divine tower is made and the castle is not here. So this is before the castle is built, but the divine tower is, is there. Um, and to me, this 
Stormvale represents kind of like the the part of America's psyche that is associated with things like like strength um, and you know Godfrey and, and all that kind of stuff. So it would make sense that this this area would not develop essentially um, for quite some time. But I believe that the divine towers spring up from the unconsciousness, um, which is why when you look down at them, that seems to just go to an empty abyss. Um, you know, it, the, the bottom of the towers and the dark chaotic unconsciousness, and they rose up to the, the light of the divine consciousness. Um, and I believe that those are probably more like a primordial aspect of of America's psyche. Um, and if each demigod kind of represents a different archetype, that would make a lot of sense because archetypes are basically like coded into us from, from before we're even born. Um, it's part of our like genetic code as Jung would, Jung would make the claim that it's it's um it's something that is we're just born with everybody has these archetypes built within them that are passed down generation to generation um you know story to story and it's something that we're not taught or really need to know but it's something that we all have access to and that from these dark unconscious archetypes the ones that make it to the light have you know, are the demigods, are like these strong um, characters in the game that, that have such big influence. Uh, and they all are part of America, um, but they're not America's true self. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense that they're probably one of the first things you know, f born of the map. So, okay, so uh, this is actually perfect timing, which is weird, but, um, and I think I've talked about this before, but these, so the um, arteria leaf, a faint pulse can be felt in the veins. To me, like, this is telling us that the map, the world is very much alive, um, and that, uh, it's it's something that is growing and changing and developing um which fits really well with with the fact that it looks like a fetus in a womb um and all of the you know miyazaki influences as far as you know the the parents the he he loves um women's he, he likes like the or talks about a lot about like the different um, menstrual cycles and things like that in his game and, and birth and all this type of stuff. So it just, it again, is just another, I've never really understood why that particular thing would have a pulse. Um, fuck. <laughs> Whoops. But yeah, it makes perfect sense to me now. If if it is, if, you know, supposed to represent a fetus um, in a womb. God damn it! Oh, okay. Phew. I feel like sometimes the jump either goes crazy far or it goes nowhere. I guess it's whether or not I'm just running, but... 
It seems more, uh... So I believe this is where I ended last time. Um, and I want to take some time and actually... So right off the bat we see water, we see um, death, and this thing springs up from underneath the, uh, the ground. Um, which again to me is like it's coming from the unconsciousness, right? It's coming from that, that chaotic abyss. Um, and just like the Blade of Calling compared to the um, Black Knife is like, to me, represents one of the conscious e ego side and one of the dark, unconscious, shadowy side. This is what, these creatures represent this to me as well. Um, they, Oh, God. Um, the reason that they're so malformed and, you know, chaotic and just not really any sort of um, rhyme or reason to them or, or orderliness is they are a... Like the, the Urtree Guardians or whatever that we see at guarding minor earth trees it's like that version but the darker chaotic side fuck me oh. yeah because they also give you a golden seed so they come from, right, they come from the same stock of, of, you know, the earth tree and, and the divine light and yada, 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 but um, they are the mirror image of it. They are the, the unconscious version of it, the, the repressed version of it. Um, okay, so as soon as we get down here, we see, obviously, it is... Water, death, um, dark, everything that you would associate with the unconsciousness is literally right here. Um, in my lore video, uh, I, I describe how things like um, oceans and waterfalls and um, all of these different things are analogous to the unconsciousness um, and then you start to see okay so what's behind you know what's behind the curtain and we see this thing <laughs> um, that looks like a an octopus a squid um, and you don't really know what to make of it, right? Um, and its tentacles are, you know, like vines that are starting to penetrate through Stormvale Castle. Um, Prince of Death's Pustule. Let's read it. Um, where is that? What the hell? Um, oh, duh, yeah, okay. A fetid pustule taken from facial flesh raises vitality. 
Vitality governs resistance to the effects of death. It is said that this pustule came from the vestige of the Prince of Death, he who used to be called Godwin. As first dead of the demigods, it's said he he's buried deep under the capital at the Erd Tree's roots. So basically this thing is telling us straight up that this is not Godwin. Um, Godwin is buried at the, you know, where we find him later in game in the um, deep, root de deep root deaths. Um, which then makes you wonder, okay, well, who the hell is this? Um, and it's possible that it is just a... Because all of Godwin's, like, roots have faces on them. I mean, even this thing has a face on it. So it's possible that this is just a... A cluster or, like, a bigger outbreak, if you will, of death root that is taking hold on the surface um, and that this is an extension of Godwin. It could also be that it is somebody different who was also murdered possibly on that night via the, um, the ceremony that Ronnie performed. Um, but either way, we know that Godwin looks almost identical to this, right? Um, he's a little more active with like you know bugs and stuff around him and things like that but they're they're very like aquatic um which again if we if we accept that things like water uh represent the unconsciousness um and essentially that is where godwin's mind has been trapped more or less for however long, thousands of years, that during that time, his outer body has literally transformed into some sort of aquatic being. Um, I mean, we see this from the game intro cinematic where as soon as he's dead, water starts to pour from his eyes, um, which to me is like his brain is trapped in that unconscious shadowy realm um which is it's definitely possible that um the dlc is about us going to find godwin in this unconsciousness um and freeing him from that um and i think that that would be a really really cool dlc to do um and, and would and would fit thematically with with what we see you know in game and then what we see in the the cover art for the for the DLC um, but yeah either way that's that's kind of my two cents on it um, it's it, so so to me death root is and I don't know if I've, if I've explained this before or not, um, but it's almost like the shadow monster from Lost, where it's it seems like once once somebody has um, kind of fulfilled their purpose or has more or less like balanced themselves, that the shadow monster comes and kind of like takes them away um and really it's kind of like a relief for that person um like in lost it was more like they were kind of stuck in purgatory and once they kind of faced the demons inside them and they accepted everything that the shadow monster kind of came after them and i don't know if death root is that because like rogier's whole quest line is about finding this and then connecting connecting it to Ronnie um, in the Night of the Black Knives. And as soon as that happens, he's like kaput. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's definitely, definitely interesting. I'd love to know what you guys think about, about it. Cause I know that there's a bunch of theories and things like that. Oh, one thing that I did want to talk about, sorry, I'm grabbing my coffee here. Um, but somebody, um, somebody asked me 
you know, because I think I was talking about ha Hackshaw's color video, which thank you to for the um, like base, brief recap of it because it's that's really really cool. Um, and why I don't just shout out you know different creators and things like that. Uh, and and basically it's it's kind of twofold. Um, once I started kind of once I made the decision that I want to figure out the, the, the lore for myself, I, I no longer watch lore videos. Um, so anything I watched would have been eight, 10 months ago. Um, and I either just don't remember it as I don't, I don't remember it well enough to like say like, Oh, go watch this or to confidently say, this is what that person was trying to convey. Um, Uh, or I um, just have not seen it, but I like I'm I'm aware that it is out there. Um, just because I mean I'm I'm in this world, right? So it's I'm I'm very familiar with like you know what the big names are doing, um, and you know for me, um, I mean I don't I don't really know how to how to say this, but I I I. I hold creators to um, a higher standard. I think um, I think that there's some some creators out there, like tarnished like archaeologists, that just do an amazing, an amazing job of finding real world influences, connecting them to the game, doing tons of research. Like, and nothing that he says is like item description, like just reading from, you know, the book of, of lore that is the game, because that's not really lore hunting. That's like, that's just reading item descriptions and then just putting cool images with it, um, which I think is fine, right? Like, I think, I think it's clear a lot of people love that, um, but I don't. It's, it's not something that like I would push others to go watch because I, 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 I just, it's not how I um, view lore, lore hunting, I guess. Like to me, lore hunting is a very arduous process of trying to understand what Miyazaki is, where he's getting his influences and then how he's interpreting those, um, understanding those influences, putting them in connection with the game, like, and, you know, there's just some that, that don't really do that. Um, I fucking hate these birds. Okay, you win. Bye. Um... So yeah, it's and I, 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 listen. I, I don't think I've ever watched a single Hackshaw video, so I, I'm not necessarily talking about him. Um, but yeah, I just think that there are, for one, there's too many things out there for me to be like, go watch this, um, or to give credit or something like that to somebody, because I just don't watch them enough to be able to understand what they're what they're saying and then confidently tell others to to go watch it or that I have the authority to like explain what that person is explaining um, if that kind of makes sense Storm collar. Um, yeah, but that's kind of my my two cents on that. Um, and it's just like it's 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 hard to like get that across without sounding like a total asshole. Um, I don't know. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. Come on, man. How about that? It's interesting, here we see that um, kind of the three braids um, that's on Nicola's or St. Trina's torch um, and uh, yeah, we, we've been discussing that you know, it, it's it seems to be tied to the three fates um, the three sisters of the Norse mythology um, Be proud Sorry, one second You were a fine warrior state was your choice of master. Let the winds lift you to a higher place. Well, who do we have here? Tarnished, are you? Clearly not one of Godric's lot. I am the Feli Lu. Tarnished and warrior like you. I'm here by decree of my father. How utterly repellent this is. This grafting of Godric's ill befits a lord. He's tainted the very winds. If you intend to challenge Godric, I ask you call upon me. The winds run foul with his deeds. I'm certain father would permit me aid the fight. Apologies, but I've idled long enough. As fellow tarnished, we must each follow our own guidance down whatever road takes us to the throne of Elden Lord. Um, she's a hottie, first of all. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, um, I'd like to do her quest line. Um, but, yeah, it seems that the the number three, the kind of braided yarn is, is all pointing in the direction of um, the three fates. Um, and for those that don't know, the, the, the three fates are like, each sister has a, a purpose in somebody's fate. So one is more like, the birth of somebody where it's um, like the beginning of the yarn, like they're pulling on it. One um, kind of stops the pulling, if you will, like stretches it out, which is the length of that yarn would be the, the lifespan of that person. And then the, the third sister actually cuts the yarn, which is the death of that person. Um, and if you think about it from the from the sense of two fingers versus three fingers, right? Like they're missing one of those fates. The two fingers are missing one of those fates, which obviously is the death part of it. Um, and they kind of locked, the Golden Order kind of locked that, that sister, if you will, away. Um, and the, the, the third one are the, the three fingers represents all of those things. Um, it, in, in not only that, but then you have, you know, the, the three butterflies. One is locked in eternal youth, you know, obviously Mikola. And then the other one is, um, you know, more about, it's the kindling, the fire of life, the, the, the thing that gives um, life, if you will which is uh, Melina. And then obviously you have the third one, which is rot and death and things like that, which is Melania. And those three could very well represent the three 
the Three Sisters of Fate, and then you have the Three Sisters at Ronnie's Castle, which, um, yeah, it's, it's the, the number three and associated with these things seems to very much tie into the Three Sisters of, of Fate and Norse mythology. Um, and it's something that I haven't really looked at into a, a whole bunch, um, but throughout this playthrough, I'm curious to see if, if we can find other examples of it. Uh, but All right, I'm gonna mute myself because I love this cutscene. of dragons. <laughs> Oh, I love this fight. Um, I just noticed that um, his hair is also, a lot of people's hair is, is braided, um, which to me is kind of like another like um, example of like the fates um, and you know how you can't really escape it. And how, um, you know, even some of the weapons are like braided, um, like the Radagon America we weapon. Um, it's it's like you can't really escape escape who you really are, right? Oh, good job, Nefeli.
Mm-hmm. Thanks, baby. All right, let's look at his. So, Remembrance of Godric the Grafted, hewn into the Erd Tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the Finger Reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain great bounty, blah, blah, blah. Feeble man sought power through the grotesque act of grafting. One day, we'll return together to our home, bathed in rays of gold. Yeah. So, you could, you could take this as a few different ways. Um... You can take this as he is trying to get as strong as he can to become Elden Lord. Um, or that he himself, although part of the Golden Lineage, is a Tarnished. Um, and he is grafting as many of his kin to himself to basically get back to, yeah, the, the home uh, bathed in rays of gold. Um, yeah. Either way, it's like Miyazaki always has such a great way of making probably the most grotesque looking character um, sympathetic, like, to me, Godric is just a weak old man, tarnished, who is sick of, you know, all of the, the, the things that people say about him and, you know, the lack of power he has and all this type of stuff. Um, and he's trying to get him and his kin into a better spot, but... It's also interesting at the beginning of that fight, um, it cuts up to the Erd Tree, um, which is, you know, what, how, what I say is Merica's um, psyche and her ego and things like that. And so he's trying to get back there into kind of the, the grace of the consciousness, if you will. Goodbye. I love this shot. It's, uh, it's clear that this castle was once a very powerful place. Um, and that since America essentially made the tarnished, um, 
that it is, has just kind of fell to ruins and has succumbed to the the darker more shadowy side of of what is left of her consciousness We see the two um, two lines there facing each other again, which we saw. You know, we see that in a bunch of motifs where, like, America is, um, you know, pouring out blessings and things like that. And kind of same thing here. We're seeing, we're seeing what it looks like America, or at least some sort of um, priestesses um, pass out blessings and and things like that. Uh, in the lore video I'm making right now, it's um, it's about the Glomide Queen and kind of the shadow and, and things like that. And I, uh, in in part of it, I explain how, you know, Sirash is essentially Godfrey's um, shadow, right? Like he, you can think of Sirash as basically being Horolu, um, because once he, once Godfrey murders Sirash, he becomes Horolu. Um, just like once you murder Malekith, you free the Glomide Queen. Um, it's it's uh, it's pretty cool, and I think it's you know it doesn't say in game, but it, it it's there. There is nothing else that Sirash would would represent really, um, because he literally. Once Godfrey had to, or once Horlu had to, essentially act more kingly and things like that, he um, took on Sirash as his uh, um, beast regent, and Sirash is definitely like he's always kind of biting him and holding back that that floodgate of of the shadow. Um, but when backed into a corner, he will release his shadow and become that, that warrior within again. Um, <clears throat> and this being, you know, the kind of the kingdom of the the first Elden Lord, if you will, and if you remember, you know, I, I think the Elden Lords are the different versions, the different development of America's Animus, um, that it would make sense that this is, you know, we see the iconography associated with that, where it's more, you know, the earlier stages of the Erd Tree, um, the, the age of plenty, like, behind there, and um, everything is just about strength, right? It is just about dominance, um, conquest, all that kind of stuff. Which is very much what the first, L or first um, stage of the Animus is. It's just kind of like this Tarzan, you know, doesn't really have much of a brain, but uh, is incredibly strong. Shabriri Grape.
Maiden, dear maiden, where are you? Please take my grapes. A yellowing, oozing eyeball of the infirm. The surface is shriveled and the inside is squishy, not unlike a large, overly ripe grape. Give to the blind maiden to guide her to the distant light. Yeah, now do we have, let me see if we have, oh yeah, we do. Okay, so it's that, right? I mean, it is literally the same thing. Um, Except this is enveloped by what looks like the earth tree roots, right? Um, so it's it's one that is held within the consciousness of you know the the light, the divine light of consciousness, and then the other, which has been more repressed and is not enveloped by the the roots, but it's the same damn thing. <laughs> um, one that's just chaotic, um, and then one that, that is orderly, one that's consciousness, one that's unconsciousness. Um, yeah. And the, and the only, literally the only difference is that this is not enveloped by um, the earth tree roots. So it's, it's another, like, anytime you see the earth tree roots that are kind of wrapping around things or anything like that, it is... It is telling you that this is the consciousness of America, that this is the divine grace, the light, the thing that, you know, um, that America is choosing. All right. How much time have we been going here? 47? All right, I'm going to talk to talk to this gal here and then we'll wrap it up. Hello? Hello. Is someone there? My name is Hayata and I'm journeying in search of the distant light. If I might be so bold as to ask, would you donate any Shabriri grapes in your possession to me? My eyesight has been weak since birth, you see. I can't tell which way I'm supposed to go next, but when I eat one of those grapes, I can feel a distant light in the back of my eyes. It will lead me to my true duty as a finger maiden. Oh, many thanks to you. Now I can feel the distant light once more. You are most kind indeed. May the blessing of the fingers be upon you. You are most kind indeed. May the blessing of the fingers be upon you. Cool. Um, yeah, there, there's so much about her, um, that is really, really interesting. Um, let me see if I can see what this is. But as we go through her, oh, as we go through her quest, um, we'll talk more and more about it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think for this episode, we'll call it there. Um, again, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I love interacting with you guys. You guys are, it's it's been really fun. So give a comment, a like, subscribe to this, and. Um, let me know what you think and uh, what we've talked about today. I know it's kind of a lot and um, <laughs> there seems to always be a lot that just kind of pops up, but the, the iconography and narrative of this game is just like, uh, uh, like once you kind of stumble into something, it's, I feel like it's, you know, we're, we're starting to pull at this thread that is just unraveling. Um, so yeah, anyways, thank you all very much. 
Jake, aka Cinder Tarnished, and I'll see you on the next one. Much love. Peace.